a whole bunch of them. Which is going to take a while to get through all of them, if I'm honest. We're doing Avec Cooler. Day one games here. Uh, this is a this is a, a pretty big match again. But I, it's not as big as the Rafa Kilson one that we just saw. Uh, simply because I don't think Avic is as in shape. Going into this, I would expect Cooler to be a favorite. And I would be surprised if Avic took it from him. But the only reason he would is, again, it's because it's a classic match. And these guys... You know, neither of them could play for two years. They'd come back and they'd have one of the most amazing series ever, regardless. But we're watching Avex's point of view. And uh, Avex already taking tons of damage. Just to see if we can find the side up a bit. His stream looks better than, like, the other ones that we've seen so far. His, his quality's looking good on this. So he just needed to chill for a moment. He didn't have much weapons. He needed to hear where was Cooler going and then determine whether or not he can go in for some weapons. But Cool has been very, very fast. It looks like Avec got caught totally off guard and was maybe expecting Cooler to stay up around shotgun. We're getting with sounds in the game at the moment. This is probably like one of the hardest maps to play with sounds as they currently are in the game or as they currently were uh, during the QuakeCon period of 2019. Avec looks good, guys. What are you talking about? He looks he looks brilliant. <laughs> Cooler stuck in the corner a bit. That was a nice dodge back. I think he realized he was playing with fire just then. That's again another counter move from Cooler. He drops immediately back down. And at that point, Avex switched away from weapons that would be so good for him. So you can see, already these are the little mind games. Cooler might not necessarily do that versus any other player. Or few others. But these are the little mind games that duelers will have against each other. Because it's about catching your opponent off guard in certain situations and being able to maximize your damage output. Hi, Akron. Hey, Baldur. I'd say the first two minutes, it just feel like Cool is slightly ahead in the mind games. And you can tell that by the score that it's reflected. But Avic is getting on to some major items right now. It could be a lot worse. This is good damage too. He's got to be careful having the rail out in case Cooler tries to do a crazy drop. And he sees that it's 89 points of health. So it's, yeah, get the hell out of there. Not going through the teleporter. There could be a uh, totem over the other side. And he sees it. So... Smart thinking. Again, it's like a very obvious place to put, which sometimes you'd expect someone at this level to not put a totem there. But uh, Avex thinking about all the possibilities. And as he just took away the totem before, he feels it is safe. That LG rush is really nice. He's using the turret now to block any damage around the side. And he did see Cooler correctly. Oh my god, that rocket. I think Cooler realized that Avex would try and find another position to do damage on him. So, trying to get that spam out, and again, doing what he can to slow things down. And again, Avex being really, really smart about uh, Galena's possibilities. I don't see enough players being as attentive towards dealing with totems as what Avex doing at the moment. And again, a very similar attack. This time, he's not available after this immediate confrontation. And that's really, really good. The turret was a great position. And then setting up for the perfect rocket afterwards. It's, it's really difficult to make comebacks on this map. And Cooler's been slightly predictable going towards the heavy. And that's where Alex has been able to open up everything. Maybe Cooler's felt that he's going to be doing more damage than he is. And Cooler caught looking the wrong way there. Again, tons of damage from Avec. Wow, he even goes for that rocket jump. That's insane. But kind of needs at the same time. He stayed around so long in that fight. There was like a triple peak going on. What I like from Cooler is that he never took his eyes away from it. He's always expecting the possibility that he could come back and never assuming that he was safe. So he's still got like a, a backlog of uh, a actions that he wants to make afterwards, but eyes are always on the target. 
Yeah, it's like playing tennis or badminton, you know? Keep your eyes on the ball or shuttle or whatever. Ooh. That damage. Oh, he is finding some damage with the nails, but I don't think he's ever going to get a kill in that position. His rail, I think it's 2 for 13. 3 for 14. 3 for 15. 4 for 16. 25% rail it should be now. He's, he's getting better now. He's not getting distracted by his own accuracies and losing confidence. I can't believe he still goes through there, dude. That's crazy to still go through. I thought he would pay a bit more than he did. But already he's got to make amends for this frag differential. Even five minutes in. Wow. Direct. Spam rail won't help. I think he may have seen another totem, actually. Ooh, he strafed into that. He did not expect Cooler down that soon. Cooler is really quick to get that position to Mega Health. He still wants to fight. Like, this is typical Avic aggression. That rocket hits. I think he gets the kill. He needed that rocket to do, like, 50-plus damage or so. And I'm pretty sure that, that frag was his. You, see, you could see that he had the read on Cooler being around rail when he was over the other side. He still managed to do like a decent amount of damage from that. Even though it felt like he got caught slightly off guard, I feel like Cooler underachieved in the fight. Cooler's timing a little bit off. Rail has only just been taken and it is a mutual frag. And that's the only reason I think that Avic was taking such risks moving along, because he knew that Cooler didn't have Rail or LG right there. Oh, he misses the Rail shot. That's the big miss. Mega timing's good. Now we can get out. Can we find him at the Teleporter exit? I think Cooler's going to heal, like, all the way. Oh, he doesn't? Okay. Again, there's some, like, really subtle parts to these fights which are very, very difficult to comment on because they're all about these little counter-reads in terms of how one is going to approach the other in combat. And the, the fact that this is, like, a high-fragging Blood Run game is also pretty awesome. There's a, there's a lot of teeny little mind games happening between the two of them. And it's just like, when is he going to push out? Is he going to push out? What weapons are going to come out with? And, you know, and if you, if you make any assumptions for a second, and it turns out to be the other way, then you get caught out. Loads and loads of damage by Avec. But he doesn't want to take anymore. He's done good damage, and he can stack up again. But he really needs to find it. Checking that there's no more totems. He really doesn't want Cooler to be triple stacked, so he's checking the obvious spots. He might need to check on the stairwell side here, actually. Oh, he finds one at the bottom, so now that he's killed two, he's probably going to assume, alright, there's probably not another one there. And I like this, pushing forward, because if he goes for heavy and Cooler pushes out the top, then he's going to take a ton of damage. He really needs to find a way through this choke point somehow. And I think he looks at it and it's like, okay, too risky. Now it's not. Now he's hit that rail shot, he can go in for it. He needs to find him. He's just so surprised there that Cooler is holding such a close angle. He's expecting him to be either to the right, but that would close him off, or I think even running up the staircase, because he knows how much damage he's done to him. So again, these little mind games are coming in. And uh, he goes to the totem in time. Okay, he still gets the kill. But Cooler did so well in the fight beforehand. He needs a shard, basically. Even though Cooler doesn't have the rail yet, you can never be too certain. Now it's difficult because Cooler slowed the pace down and he's managed to get himself to 100-100. Cooler goes for heavy though. Like, I'm so surprised Cooler does that. 
I think that's personally really unnecessary. I think he's got a very good chance of winning if he just holds that 100-100 stack and just runs away. Because it wasn't like Avic was that unattentive. He still managed to get the best part of 200 damage. Thing is, now there's time lacking. He sees the damage hit Avic and is like, all right, and move through. Because now I know he's dropped from Tribolt towards the Mega that going through the teleporter all of a sudden is safe again. And with five seconds to go. Yeah, he, he, he hears he's there, but he knows he can't catch up with him. So even if the rail hits, it's not possible. I think Cooler could have made the end a little bit easier for himself, but still, uh, still a nice victory and a really nice game um, with a lot of these fights being... Uh, just having a lot of depth to them, I feel like. But it's a, it's a tough match. It's a really, really tough match. I think Cooler bought some good shape. Like one thing that I was, I didn't expect Cooler to do this tournament is do as well as he actually ended up doing, because he had limited practice partners, Tox and Base. He ma mainly played against, which I guess are two fairly different playstyles to go against. Um, but there's a lot of people practicing with a lot of different players, and I feel like the more you can build a profile of as many players as possible, um, the more rounded your game could end up being. But I also knew at the same time that you can never, ever, ever, ever underestimate Cooler at a LAN event because his shape online is always like 50% of the shape that he brings to LAN. And that's never really changed in Quake Champions. People consistently underestimate Cooler on the build up to a LAN. And when he gets to LAN, he's rarely outside of top four. Yo, Kvar, thanks so much for the 10 full months, man. Appreciate it. Hope you're well. Yeah, I mean, again, the whole jet lag thing, I'm, I'm never going to use as an excuse. I'm never going to be impressed or unimpressed at a player in their performance based on jet lag and stuff. He, he's practiced for 20 hours a day. He's done all the preparations that he needs. Um, so regardless of the conditions, for, for me, I, I phase that stuff out. So if a player says they do bad because they're jet lagged, I mean, like, I kind of feel like, so what at that stage? I know that Cooler's not doing badly, and he is probably jet lagged, but I don't know. For me, it's like the shittiest kind of uh, factor when applying to, like, the context of a land event. It's just, it's just stuff I don't want to think about. I, I, I don't get entertained or interested by that. So, not to try and, you know, dump on what you're saying or anything. Oh, do they have multiple cancelled flights? That's... Oh, I thought they just had one cancelled flight um, when they got a, a connection in America. Anyway, I've been missing some of this. Cooler has been getting the early frags. Because they were flying late anyway. They were trying to arrive on the Wednesday... So as far as I was aware, they had a cancelled connecting flight. Oh, that rocket, man. That rocket wrecked him. He does steal the uh, heavy. If there are some benefits to. But Avic needs to start being a little bit more solid at the moment. He's got this rotation of items that kind of have a bit of an impact. Otherwise, it's play passive. And Cooler, again, he's just doing funny things with the bounce pad, which is just making life a little bit awkward for Avic. That's the ledge grab there. Ledge grab saves the damage. Just never stop spamming Tribolt. Let that be the message. That, okay, that was really, really decent. He gets through. I think he goes immediately for the double jump. Even though he had the LGR, I thought having the rockets out straight away would be ideal. He finds Cooler immediately. Trying to go for the spawn frag. Did he not, did, this, did he not force the spawn? Man? That was weird. 
And he manages to get that item in time. Even though the Mega spawned. Cooler might think he's taken it already, but okay, that's going to change now. I think it's still worth it going for the heavy. It pads him out, and his health was kind of not terrible, and that's hilarious that Avic gets that kill. The perfect nail spam. He can't really commit to this fight. Machine gun's a bit too painful. He's going to wish he has a rail gun, but he needs to back away, slow the game down a little bit, try to get as close to 100 as 100 he can before this next rotation of items. Heavy and Mega spawn within five, uh, five seconds of each other. And he's dodged a rocket. He can get himself rail. And he's not going to push elbow, I don't think, because it would be too easy for Cooler to get some damage onto him, as he's just going to accept that Cooler took the Mega Health. That elbow position, by the way, is a place where so many like amateur players, I think, throw their games with the amount of damage that can be done. Going through this teleport is so dangerous because you can very likely get railed. And he, he knows it, so he has to do something to dodge and delay it. Like, the longer he delays going through the teleporter, the more cooler thinks that he's not actually going to push through it. That's a really nice bounce pad push from Cooler. One of the last things you expect there is a player to push up the bounce pad. You expect, especially when they don't have necessarily that full of a stack. You expect them to maybe slowly negotiate their way onto the heavy armor. So Cooler again with a nice little trick. Timing is a little bit off from Avic. If he gets there in the end, but it's quite easy to do damage with rockets from below there. Is he going to get both the items? No, that Mega was taken already. Oh, it wasn't? Okay, there's some really weird timers going on now with that, uh, that Mega Health. Because Heavy should be up now in like 5 seconds, I think. Oh, it's up immediately? Okay, what a weird rotation. Nice little midi. Not the easiest of shots, even though he's close range. Uh, and I think Cooler was hoping that he'd play the maths on it and that Avic would miss it. I think he needs to be super careful. His like ammo management has been tight. He's looking a lot better now. See, he's never been that over eager towards getting to the railgun. He's been favoring getting position, keeping position in center map. That's a really good spam rocket. It was railable up until that point. couple of great rockets there from Avec. That rail from Cooler was super sick though. Yeah, Avec's got to get the hell out. This is now kind of scary for him. Did he make it to Mega? Again, my timing's like super off. That's a nice little walk down, actually. It's a shame for Alec that he gets railed, but I, I generally like what he did there. It was 5 for 5. Like, it's a tense match. Even though I think that Cooler is a lot more prepared for this game, Avic always knows how to bring the game versus him. Well, this time, uh, Cooler just pushes around confidently, and uh, Avic's shots just aren't enough to keep him at bay. You're trying to mess with the movement more than mess with, like, the motivation to push through. You want Cooler to still want to push through, but he gets just held up by the tribal damage or the rockets or whatever. Oh my god, even though Cooler walks into the rocket, he's on point with his shots. There's been a, a d distinct lack of like spawn fragging in this one. I was expecting possibly more. Oh, he's getting chased, so he's just trying to get as much as he can does get a second punch so he's done tons of damage but now he's got to make back three frags in two minutes 
game is hard. Wow, he actually goes to the... I'll go definitely switch for shotgun. I feel... <sighs> I wish I knew what stack cooler was out there. Because I feel like he had, like, less than 70. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he just picked up another item. But I'm, I'm pretty sure after two rails, you'd be weak in that instance when there'd been so much fighting going on. Of course, there's still time transformation. Alex definitely been having a hard time with the major items as well. Yeah, he needs that rail to... He really needs that rail gun. I think he was hoping to collect it just then. Oh, that's spicy. Alex needs to be able to play the long range. He needs to be able to play every range of game now because he's desperate for a comeback. Not having the rail is actually a, a hindrance for him. Looks like he got distracted for a second looking at something else. I think he knows already. It's as if he knows that, like, that, that move in itself was already, like, the final nail in the coffin. One minute warning. Yeah. So, the thing he took off is basically the noise cancelling. Or sound dampen. Oh, I don't know what to call it. Basically, it's like these big fat ear maps, and you hear no external noises. They're really, really good, and they cost like twenty or thirty euros. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of players that are using them. But he's not really. The last forty-five seconds, he's definitely not been taken seriously. And I honestly think that rocket jump where he missed the railgun was like a big nuisance for him. And then getting railed from cooler, so he lost all of his made like massive stack. So that's GG's. That's Cooler taking it 2-0. And it's still a good victory from Cooler. And it, like, Avic gave him a really, really hard game. I could definitely have seen that game being more convincing towards Cooler, but still, uh, like, a, a decent showing from, from him, uh, I'd say. And he just left, so I think I'm pretty sure he went and said GG and everything. 50% he hit 2 of 4, like he really wasn't going for the